Hello there, guess what I got? I have a, uh, I got a tablet, like I said I was going to. I also got a wireless keyboard and mouse, which is nice, because now, like, look, I've got one button that brings up the calculator. Also, if you notice a change in my calculator, it's because I'm now on my Windows 7 system. I'm using a new, uh, screen recording software. I'm also now using Photoshop instead of Paint. Overall, big upgrades, um, because I've, I've taught one chapter in Poe, and I've taught, um, like, about, like, one and a half chapters in physics, and, um, from the feedback that I'm getting, it's, uh, they're helping people, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, anyway, on to our lesson. Okay, so what I'm going to cover today is, uh, it's going to be, um, it's called, it's the, ch I think the chapter title is gonna be, like, Momentum and Impulse or something. I'm doing it a bit in advance, just so I can get the videos out of the way. But, uh, it's momentum and impulse. And what are momentum and impulse? Well, first let's look at momentum, and then from there we'll kind of come up with impulse. So, momentum, the symbol for momentum is P. And I'm guessing that's just because, um, I don't know, maybe because mass was already take, already took M. Maybe it could use the big M, but eh. P, uh, you can think about that as, um, mm, go away. Uh, and, uh, that's just something that you should be able to remember relatively easily, so I'm not going to provide any kind of mnemonic device for that. Uh, but that's equal to, and I, actually, I'm not going to, uh, write it down just yet. Your moment, momentum of an object is how much you don't want to get hit by it if you're in its path, or how much you don't want to be in the way of it. So, um, if you have one of these big, uh, one of these big trailer trucks, and yes, they totally do look exactly like this, so, trust me on that, because, you know, I'm a big trailer person. They look exactly like that. All that good stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you've got one of these big, one of those big trucks, and then you've got um, a Volkswagen Beetle. That looks kind of like a flying saucer. And you've got a Volkswagen Beetle, and they're both moving at you at, say... Uh, maybe this one's moving, maybe, yeah, they're both moving at you at 20 miles an hour. So, momentum is how, is like we said, how much you don't want to be in the way of it. So which would you rather be in the way of? The giant thing or the little thing? The thing that's huge and massive or the thing that has less mass? And that kind of leads into the formula. You'd rather be here, and because I mean, while you'd rather, while you don't really want to be in the way of any cars, um, if you have to be in the way of one of them, for instance, if you're in the middle of the street and they're uh, three feet from you and you have to choose to step either way, you'd choose here because you'd get less injured, uh, hopefully. But, um, so that's the first part of the momentum formula, mass. The more massive something is, the more momentum it has. And that, you, um, it probably came naturally to you, it just seems obvious, but even if it's obvious, I'm going to cover it, because, uh, if I start skipping over things, because they might seem obvious to some people, but not obvious to others, well, then I turn into our physics and poetry teachers, um, which, obviously, that wouldn't help. Uh, okay, what's next? Well, also, what if you had, um, an, oh, time for a fancy tool list. Actually, no, this is the same as what I could do in, um, in paint. Actually, I think it's going to be less convenient now that I think about it. Oh, God damn it. There's no easy way of doing this, is there? Crap. Oh man, now I'm starting to like paint almost better. Uh, let's see, can I select this? Sorry, I'm still having fun with my new program. Or rather, not new, but... Uh, you get the picture. There we go. Okay, so, you got another car. Um, let me merge these two layers. Uh, how do I merge them? Merge. Merge. Merge! Merge! This is probably pretty creepy. Um, okay. Screw that. Anyway. Um, so, now you've got two Volkswagen Beetles coming at you. You're in the middle of the highway. And, uh, not this guy. He's already dead. Uh, and this one's going 20 miles an hour, and this one's going 5 miles an hour. Where would you step if you were right here and you had to pick one? Well, seems pretty obvious. You would step right there, right? You would you would stand in the way of the 5 mile an hour beetle bug, or Volkswagen Beetle, because it's not moving as fast, so you'd rather be in the way of that one. And that gets to the second part of the momentum equation, velocity, and that's just how fast something is moving. 
and both of these should seem kind of obvious, so hopefully this won't be too difficult of an equation to uh, remember and make sense of. Momentum is how much you don't want to get hit by something. Um, so, what can we do with that? Uh, okay, well, um, basically all the problems you'll see, um, at least until we get into impulse, uh, the problems that you're going to see are basically going to be problems like um, literally just finding the momentum of something. Because uh, there's really no problems that just involve momentum other than, okay, you have a football player who's 120 kilograms, and uh, you get and he's traveling at um, 2 feet per second. He's running at 2 feet per sec, um, not feet, uh, 2 meters per second. Uh, so what's his velocity? Okay, that's easy. We've got 120 kilograms times, that's the math, times 2 meters per second. And that's equal to 240. Let's look at these units. We've got kilogram meters per second. Yeah, that's a, that's a weird unit. What does that mean? Uh, well, let's actually, let's, let's investigate this a little bit. Um, so this is kilogram meters per second. That's a bit odd, but that's the unit. There's no convenient unit, like a Newton or anything. But what, what do we say a Newton was? Well, a Newton is a unit of force, right? And force is equal to mass times acceleration. Mass times acceleration, right? So, mass is in kilograms. And acceleration is in meters per second squared. So, meters per second per second. So, these seem very similar, right? And as it turns out, it looks like if we just kind of multiply this by um, a second and cross these out, well, then it looks like we get these momentum units. So how do we multiply by seconds? Well, let's throw in a T in there. Let's throw in some amount of time, right? Some time that elapses, because then that's time in seconds, and that cancels out. So now it looks like we have the same units. That seems a bit weird, maybe, that, um, that if we multiply a time by a force, uh, we get the same units as momentum. What, uh, what can we make of that? And uh, as it turns out, we're getting into something called um, impulse. And, uh, oops, crap. Where is all this work that I'm doing? Oh, ah, god damn it. <laughs> oh, dear. Crap, 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 crap. I probably should have planned this out a lot better than I did. But you know me in planning and how it just doesn't really work out and stuff. Yeah. Ah, uh, crap. Boom. Fixed. Okay. Boom. Swish. New color. Okay. Um. Let's select all this crap. Boom. Swish. Okay. Now. Um. So what we just figured out was we said that somehow this change in time, uh, times some force is equal to that momentum that we got, remember, because that's seconds, and this is kilogram meters per second squared, that's the weird units, so seconds times oh, seconds and the second squared, they can't thought, you just get kilogram meters per second, and it's the same that we get over here. It's that dimensional analysis thing, and uh, it leads us to some weird equations, like this. Uh, and that's not, this is not strictly true, I should make this a yield sign, because uh, basically all, all it gives us is the right unit. Uh, it doesn't necessarily give us momentum. Because notice this is a change in time, and generally what you'll notice with these, uh, these delta symbols is that a lot of the times they seem to, like, uh, cancel out or something. I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to work like that, but you need to have a delta here as well in order for the, for it to, um, like, balance or something. I don't know why, but, uh, the, maybe it's just because it's applying, I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a change. Uh, so maybe, maybe this makes sense, uh, maybe not, I don't know, let's, let's look at this. Um, if you have, say, uh, or rather, first let's define what is, what is change in momentum. Well, this kind of comes from all of our past equations that we've looked at. Our change in momentum is going to be whatever momentum we ended at minus whatever momentum we started at. And if you don't get that, look at some of the earliest kinematics videos. Um, so that's, a, that's what our change in momentum is, right? Um, so, what's, so, so what, what is this? 
our delta T F is equal to P F minus P I. Uh, our force applied over some amount of time, that's what this is, right? This is some change in time, so if you're applying, say, a force for some amount of time, uh, you're changing the momentum of something, right? Because if you're not, as long as the mass is staying the same, well then, by, by applying a force that's not zero, you're accelerating it or decelerating it, so it's going to be changing in the velocity, which is going to be changing in the momentum. Um, so that's what this... Uh, that's what this means. This is called impulse. Uh, I think the, the letter for it is I. I don't know uh, how commonly that's used, but I have definitely seen it used before. Uh, and that's the force applied times how long you're applying it for. Uh, in other words, the change in momentum or the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Uh, so what are some kind of problem that, that might use this, that we can kind of get a better understanding of it. Um, or rather, what's a good analogy for something? Well, think about it this way. Uh, when you see, like, maybe like a catcher or something with a glove, the catcher's on the Yankees, if you're a Yankees fan, uh, that's a lovely glove. Everyone loves four-fingered gloves. Uh, anyway, when, you, when he catches that ball, right, when the ball is speeding towards him and he catches it, do you see them, or rather, maybe uh, any any player on the Yankees, any player on any team, when they catch the ball, um, you don't see them just hold their arms stiff, right? They, as the ball hits, they kind of move their arm back a bit, right? And that's because uh, the ball is hitting their their hand or the mitt for a longer amount of time, right? By pulling it back, they're increasing the time. So by increasing the time, um, it actually decreases the force that's going on. Um, so how does all this work? Um, what's the best way of explaining this? Mm, maybe the best way of uh, saying it is actually looking at it like uh, dividing by T and saying that the force exerted by something is equal to the... Um, the change in momentum divided by the time interval. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways of writing. Whoops, this should be key. There's a lot of different ways of writing it. Probably the best way of looking at impulse is literally just change in momentum um, or force applied for some time interval. Uh, these are all kind of like the same thing, and this is one of the implications of it. Um, because if you are, um, let's say, say the ball weighs, uh, I don't know, I have no idea what a baseball weighs in kilograms. I'm going to say maybe it weighs one kilogram. Now let's make it weigh 0.5 kilograms. The baseball weighs 0.5 kilograms uh, times its velocity, which will say, again, I have no idea, I don't know, uh, Six meters per second. I don't know what speed that is. I have no idea. But five kilograms times six meters per second that gives us a um, a momentum of right six times point five of three uh, kilogram meters per second. Kilogram meters per second. So that's the momentum that this has. And uh, what we'll learn about with the law of conservation of momentum is that. Uh, um, actually, no. Screw it. Uh, so this is what momentum it has initially, right? The initial momentum is 3 kilogram meters per second squared. That's the momentum it has here. When he catches it, and he catches it, brings it to a stop, that's its final momentum. That's going to be zero, right? Because the velocity, when it... Oops, let me write down my basic equation there. The velocity, when he brings it to a stop, is going to be zero. That means that the momentum is going to be zero. Uh, crap, I'm out of time. I gotta go. Uh, I will pick this up in my next video.